In this video I thought I'd talk a little bit more about diodes and bridge rectifiers. Now if you do much electronic servicing you're probably already familiar with bridge rectifiers but for those of you that aren't let me point out a few of the different shapes you might see when you're looking at a bridge rectifier. A lot of times it'll be a little square jobby like this and it's often located next to your main reservoir capacitor or somewhere near your AC line or a fuse. Now, some of the bridge rectifiers you'll encounter can have some very unusual shapes and you may not recognize what they are right away. For example, here we're looking at one that's got a nice big heat sink on it. Here we're looking at one that's made to be mounted to a heat sink. And if you'll notice, a lot of times there'll be a little symbol on the inputs of the bridge rectifier where it'll show a plus and the minus and a little sine wave symbol like what you see right here. And that's just letting you know that would be where the AC goes in and of course your DC would be your plus and minus on the output side here. Well I took my magnifying glass and put it in front of the camera so you can get a better view of some of these bridge rectifiers here. They can, let me see, I probably got to stick my finger here so you can get a better idea of what how small they can be in some cases. There's a bigger one there. There's another small one. There's one that's round. You wouldn't even think that would be a bridge rectifier. Of course, we've got this nice big one here with a heat sink on it. And uh, I wanted to show you the little uh, sine wave symbol on it. I don't think the camera's picking that up. There you can see the little sine wave symbol on there, indicating that's the input. And of course, you've got your output negative and positive on that side. There's another, another one right there. Sometimes you'll see a diode that appears to be a transistor, but it's only got two leads. And it can trick you. But this is actually a diode here. And this is actually two diodes, believe it or not. They share a common pin in the center, but this is the equivalent of two diodes from the center to this side and to this side here. Another kind of diode you run into quite a bit are the uh, low voltage drop diodes, also known as Schottky barrier diodes. You'll notice on my meter here, if I check across here using the diode check function on my meter, I get nothing in that direction. I turn it in this direction. And I'm only measuring about 0.2 of a volt voltage drop across the diode. That's a lot less than most diodes, so you might conclude that there's something wrong with it, but that's perfectly normal for this diode. Whereas if I check a more conventional diode here, it's uh, usually about 0.5 to 0.6 voltage drop across one junction to the other here. Now there's another type of diode that you'll run into from time to time, uh, mainly on microwave ovens where the diodes, not you can't check it on a conventional uh, diode check function on your meter. And I'll show you how you check this type of diode here. Now if you've ever had an occasion where you needed to check one of these diodes you'll find in microwave ovens, you'll notice they don't check like a normal diode would on your uh, diode check function with your meter. It doesn't matter which direction you hook it up to, you don't get a reading. What you have to do in a case where you have this type of diode is put a circuit together like this. You apply 15 volts to both ends of the diode, but do it through a resistor. I've got a 1000 ohm resistor right there. And then measure across the diode with your meter on the voltage scale. And if you measure 6 to 10 volts across the diode, that's actually a good diode. And if you measure a, uh, what is it, 0 to 2 volts, they say that's a shorted diode. And although short would probably be easy to detect, but anyway. You probably won't run into too many of these diodes, but if you ever do work on a microwave oven, these diodes do go bad at times, and as well as the capacitors, so one more little tip. The other thing I wanted to say is that there are many different types of diodes, and it's important you become familiar with at least a few of them. For example, you might have a diode that's capable of transferring a higher current, uh, like this one I'm pointing at right here, whereas you might uh, have one of these little tiny switching diodes that... Uh, isn't capable of really rectifying that much power, but it can use, be used for other purposes. And believe it or not, even a LED is considered a diode. It tends to conduct in one direction, but not in the other. Um, the other thing you want to keep in mind is often you'll run into diodes that are what's known as fast switching diodes. And the reason it's important you know the difference, that's because when you're working on a power supply, it's important that you use the right kind of diode. I remember when I first started working in a television repair shop, I replaced the diode on the secondary side of my switching transformer with just a conventional diode because I 
I saw that it was capable of the same current as the one that I had pulled out of the unit I was working on, and then I came to find out that the diode ran awful hot, and that's because I wasn't using a fast switching diode. So it's important that you use the right diode. Now if you've determined that you have a bad diode, a lot of times you won't necessarily need the schematic to know what replacement value you'll need for the diode. For example, if you look carefully at the side of one of these diodes here, again I don't think the uh, camera's going to pick this up, but you'll notice that there's numbers on the side of the diode, and if you look up these numbers in, a, in an ECG manual or just go online, often you'll find out the value of the diode. Now there's another type of diode you run into quite often, and it's called a Zener diode, and it has a symbol that looks like this. And these diodes are a little bit different than your conventional diodes in that they're used generally in voltage regulator circuits or over voltage protection circuits where they're actually not capable of conducting until you reach a certain voltage. Now once in a while I'll run into a situation where I can't find the value of the Zener diode and I'll figure it out on my own using this method. I'm sure. In this case I'm using a variable uh, power source here. You'll notice when I turn up the power here, I've got it rigged up to my meter in this matter. This is my meter. These are my two probes measuring across the diode. And I put a resistor here so I don't burn up the uh, diode. You'll notice when I, this is a, about a 5.5 volt Zener diode. You'll notice when I turn up the power on the right here, both voltages are about the same. And then I'll reach a point where, see I'm up to 6 volts here, I'm still about 5.3 here. It's holding steady at this point. It'll vary a little bit, but not much. So it's it's regulating the voltage here for me is what it's doing. Now when you're checking a Zeno diode to see if it's gone bad, it'll generally check as any other diode would. You're looking basically for short circuits. In other words, if the diode goes bad, it'll begin to conduct in both directions rather than just in one direction. Zeno diodes also have little numbers on the side of them, so if you ever have to identify the value of your Zener diode, carefully read the numbers off the side here. That'll usually help you out. Now when you're checking a bridge rectifier, I find it very helpful just to draw myself a quick diagram, just to give me a better idea how I should expect a bridge rectifier to check. For example, taking a look at this one here, we'll know that this is my positive output here and this is my negative output. I'll, I'll quickly draw myself a little diagram and I'll take my meter and measure across the different junctions to see if everything's checking normal. I know, for example, I should have current flow from this direction to this direction, but not in the other way. And the same goes for every one of these diodes here. So that's helpful.